Hi everyone, John Quinn here. I'm back again with you. Now we're today we're in downtown Newport looking at a couple of sites and I've got one of my colleagues from the history department with me. That's Dr. Bill Lehman. Welcome Bill. Thanks John. Uh, I'm Bill Lehman. I teach American history here at Salve Regina University. I'm also the director of the Pell Honors Program. Today we're going to do two things. We're going to look at this very odd building behind us. I'm going to talk about that for a little bit and the controversy around it. And since Dr. Lehman is a military historian, we're going to talk a little bit about the Navy. The Navy has lots of connections to Newport and there's a Navy site right next to us here. So I'm going to start talking about this tower and there's controversy even about what to call the tower. Some people call the tower the Viking Tower. The theory here put forward in the 19th century was this building is a ruin, a remnant of a landing from the Vikings in the Middle Ages. They came to this island, the Quidnick Island, and this is what's left. And in this building, the Vikings had pagan religious services to celebrate the solstice, the summer solstice, and the winter solstice. And it all seems very interesting and plausible. And for that reason, you're going to see Viking connections everywhere when you walk around town. If your family goes to visit you, they might be staying at the Hotel Viking just down the street. If your family decides to go take a cruise around the harbor, they'll be on the Viking Queen. If you spill something on that fancy shirt or dress that you had, you may be taking it to the Viking dry cleaners. If you check out the high school in Newport, the Rogers High School, you'll find out that they're the Vikings. So there's Viking everything, and it's all connected to the Viking Tower. And it all sounds so great, but unfortunately, we don't think it's actually true. What most historians think is it really should be called the Old Stone Mill, that this really was a windmill. So think of that with a cap on the top, right? Uh, this is the the base of a windmill dating from the 1600s. This was a farm uh, and one of several windmills here uh, in the center of the island. It doesn't sound as exciting, um, but that's what we think. But on the other hand, there's some adherence to the Viking theory and that's why we get all these Viking uh, references. And I want you to look at a house that fronts this, this square. It's a white house and it's covered by trees so you probably can't see too much maybe you can see the pillars it's a very nice house and i just want to mention that for for two reasons one one of the people who used to summer here was named catherine lorillard wolf so she was here in the late 19th century when the vikings story was very popular and of course she would have probably walked into this park i'll bet she examined this over and over again well in the 1880s she decided to build herself her own house right next door to Oakford Fort, built in 1882. She's going to call it Vinland, and it's full of all sorts of Viking connections. And we're going to take a look at that next time when we're back on campus. I also want to point out that that house was later owned by Cornelius Moore. We mentioned him already. He was the lawyer for Mr. Golette, helped set up Salve, was the chairman of the board, and he also uh, purchased more hall on campus. So, so that white building's got connections to Salve. So now we're going to switch over and Dr. Lehman's going to talk about the Navy and its connections right here. Hi again. We are at the corner of Bellevue Avenue and Pelham Street here in Newport. And after the outbreak of the Civil War in April of 1861, the U.S. Naval Academy moved from its campus in Annapolis, Maryland, to this location here in Newport. Um, Navy officials decided to move the Academy out of concern for its security because of the large number of secessionists that lived in Maryland. Also, after President Abraham Lincoln issued his call for troops uh, from the states to put down the Southern Rebellion, northern regiments on their way to Washington, D.C. to defend the nation's capital 
ended up turning the Naval Academy's Annapolis campus into an armed camp, disrupting classes and the academic routine there. Uh, so the Navy ordered the Naval Academy faculty to load the midshipmen onto the Academy's training ship, the famous USS Constitution, um, and the Constitution set sail north uh, to Fort Adams here in Newport. Fort Adams was in such poor shape that it really wasn't suitable to be the location for the Naval Academy. So the Navy ended up leasing the Atlantic House Hotel which is located, uh, was located on this site um, at the corner of Pelham and Bellevue Avenue. And the Naval Academy would remain at the Atlantic House Hotel until the end of the Civil War in April of 1865. After the war concluded, the state of Rhode Island attempted to make Newport the permanent home of the Naval Academy but Navy officials ordered the school to return to Annapolis uh, in the spring of 1865. The Atlantic House Hotel ended up being demolished in 1877, and today the site is the home of the Elks Lodge here in Newport.